Hey everyone, welcome to the tutorial for the push physics control. Here you'll learn how to use the push function for a couple of different uses. You can see here that I have a dynamic log with two dynamic connectors on top of it, with static poles surrounding it. So let's make this into a working battering ram sort of object. The first thing I want to do is add some constraints to my little nubs here so they'll remain attached to the log. To do this, the first thing I'll do is attach these little studs here to my log. To do that, I'll go into the constraint settings for each and apply a hinge constraint. I need to make sure to lock everything up and select the z-axis. Essentially what this does is it locks each stud in place, but I also need to make sure that they are targeted to my big log here. Just think of some z-axis nails sticking them into place on the log. The next thing I want to do is add some additional constraints to my studs here. But this time I'm going to add some rope constraints and target them to the two closest poles. Note that the pivot point on these poles has been placed at the top, so once they are targeted, the ropes will automatically connect to the tops of the poles so that they can dangle down. Once I've gotten everything connected, it's time for me to bring in my push control. Now the first thing I want to do here is select my log as the controlled object. Now it's all connected, so let's press the action button and see what happens. You'll notice that my log will swing to one side, which is not really what I want. This is because my push dummy's red x-axis is facing that direction. So let's go into advanced options and change the axis. You'll see when I switch to the y-axis that the push goes in the direction that I want now. As with many of the other force controls, the multiply force will add an exponential boost to the power behind your force, as you see here. When using the push force in this situation, it's important to consider momentum, as well as when you hit the action button. There's also an automated option with the push control as well. If I put the auto delay up a bit, and then toggle auto push on, you can see the results here. Maybe my initial values are a bit too fast, so I'll go back into the advanced options and increase the delay, as well as increase the power slightly. Now, since the direction of the push is directly related to the axis of the dummy, if I want the end of my log to push toward the end no matter which direction it's in, I will need to move my dummy up to the log and align its y-axis to the direction of the log, and then attach it. This way, every time I press the push button, the log will push toward the ends of the log instead of just sideways along the world plane. I can get some good momentum going with this method as well. If you want, you can also rotate the push dummy to change the direction instead of changing the axis, in case you find the actual direction of the dummy confusing. You can see here that when I rotate the dummy and apply the push from different directions, that the log will indeed follow the direction of the push dummy. Okay, in this example I'm going to show how you can use the auto push to make a prop hover above the ground. I'm selecting the helicopter here as the target of my push control, but as you can see, it's pushing along the red x-axis by default, so I'll go switch that to the blue z-axis in order to get my helicopter to float upwards. So now it floats upward but still moves forward and the propellers also fly off. This is partially due to the uneven weight distribution of my main helicopter body, as the top propeller is not yet constrained to the main body. I'll refine this a bit, but first let's make sure all of the meshes in my model are set to self-mesh to avoid any unwanted collisions. Once I do that, I'll need to add a constraint onto my propeller in order to solidly connect it to the body of my helicopter. For both the upper and rear propellers, I'm going to use a hinge constraint, 
and lock them to the body of my helicopter. Right now, the axis doesn't matter, as long as they're both locked securely with no movement. You'll now see that the propeller of the helicopter are now attached to the body, and the balance is a lot better as well. Next what I want to do is bring in a motor A to rotate the propeller on the top while it's floating. So I'll just click and drag to open a new control panel and double click it to add my motor A. I'll then select the propeller as the target of my control and ensure that I have the Z axis selected so the rotor will rotate properly. You'll see that after I've had this all set up that the model will now fall back due to the addition of the rear rotor. We don't want it to do this in mid-air, so to fix this, what I can do is simply add a generic constraint to the body of my helicopter, which will prevent it from flipping over. I'm adding a generic constraint here, and although I don't want to limit the movement, I do want to limit the rotation. So I'll just go ahead and set the rotation values to something small like negative 10 and 10 here on all axes. What this will do is only allow the structure to rotate 10 degrees on each axis, so it doesn't turn around or flip over. Now what I can do is use my original push control and continually click it to raise my helicopter into the sky. It's quite tiresome to continually click the push button however, and in addition you may want to add another steering control later. So what I'm going to do is set up auto push. You can see when I use the action button that even though the strength is really low, the helicopter will go shooting up. I can fix this by adjusting the weight of my main body. I'll set it a little higher, and this time when I play back, you'll see that I won't even lift off the ground. Let's go in and increase the delay a bit to get less frequency to the push, and also increase the strength, so it will lift the helicopter with more power. Now you can see a good hovering motion, with subtle and natural up and down movements from the pushes. I can activate the propeller as well, and you can see a pretty good example of a fully controllable helicopter here. I can adjust the strength of the push in real time to lower and raise the helicopter's altitude. You'll also want to keep in mind when you do this, however, that momentum plays a factor. So if my helicopter is falling fast, I'll need to add more strength to lift it up than normal, and even it out later. You can combine the push control with many other types of forces as well, 